Hey guys, this is Anand. Wiley Fox have been doing rolling releases of their phones for the past few months, and now they've released their best and most expensive one yet. This is the Wiley Fox Swift 2X. This phone is the successor to its baby brother, the Wiley Fox Swift 2 Plus, a review I did which you can see up there. It looks almost identical and that's because it more or less is. It has the same slightly curved back with fingerprint sensor, the bottom has a USB Type-C port with the dual SIM or micro SD slot on the left and volume rocker and power button on the right. The one part where there is a slight difference is the bigger and better display. It's a 5.2 inch 1080p panel, unlike the smaller 5 inch 720p panel on the Swift 2 Plus. This means that the Wiley Fox finally have built a retina display screen. In other words, you can't tell the pixels apart from one another. They've improved the quality of the panel as well. The colours are more accurate and it isn't overly warm like on the 2 Plus and the viewing angles are excellent. So a bigger screen means a bigger phone, right? Yes, but not by much. It's only a fraction of a millimetre taller, wider and thicker. That means the bezels around the screen are smaller and it's still manageable in the hand to hold, especially with the curved sides. What's more, it still comes in at the same weight at 155 grams. That's on the outside, but on the inside, this phone has some reasonable specs considering the £220 price tag. It has a Snapdragon 430 processor, 3GB of RAM and 32GB of storage and a 3100 mAh battery. That battery is 400 mAh bigger than the one found in its predecessor and it supports Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0. This means you can get 75% charge in just 55 minutes. Handy if you want to have some battery in a pinch. Battery life is very good. I can generally have around 15% battery left at the end of the day, which is reasonable. This is even with some GPS use during the day. Part of the reason the battery life is so good is that the 430 processor is quite a low power chip. You can mainly make the claim that it's underpowered, but new out of the box, it's really snappy through the UI and multitasking. There was the occasional hiccup and stutter here and there in my time of testing. The Adreno 505 GPU isn't the most powerful, but it provides enough power to handle screen animations and games. Graphically intensive mobile games are few and far between, and even then they run fine. The cameras are similar to the ones found on its predecessor. Got an 8 megapixel front facing selfie camera and a 16 megapixel rear facing shooter. It has reasonably sized pixels at 1 micrometer, which should improve low light performance. Looking at these shots in the dark, you can see they're alright, but not that great. There's a lot of grain, and the lack of optical image stabilization means the images come out blurry, if not held perfectly level. Pictures in good light are a lot better. They're still a little soft, but the colors are vibrant. The one downfall of this camera is that it only shoots at 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is a bit disappointing. Footage otherwise is okay, nothing exceptional, but not terrible either. Again, no optical image stabilization here either, so a steady hand is required to get the best shots. Whilst I have a lot of positive things to say about the phone, I have a few annoyances as well. When charging, the indicator light on the front is extremely bright to the point where it's blinding at night if you're trying to use your phone. The volume and power button have the same texturing on the side, making it easier to mix them up, and they wobble when you touch them, so not the best quality there. Also like its predecessor, the auto brightness on the screen is really aggressive and it gets quite annoying. It changes constantly, even with minor fluctuations in light, so I've had to turn it off. However, with all this taken into account, is it worth the money you pay for it? I'd say so. The much better screen, great metal design and fingerprint sensor are great for the price. They have competition from larger manufacturers like Moto with their G5, but Wiley Fox can still hold their own. Thank you for watching this video, if you enjoyed it please drop a like down below and hit that subscribe button to see more from me, like my Bose Sandic mini review which you can see there. That's all for now guys, so I'll catch you in the next one, bye.